And here we are at Penzance and the Silonian sits at its mooring waiting to do its next trip and the 0503 for London Paddington has just departed but I'm not on it and I'm not on it because that's got a number one head code because yes I'm back again doing all by twos name of the game if you've seen all by twos north is to travel only on trains with the two head code and today is all by twos east or should I say all by twos east so yes, here I am at Penzance, in railway terms, on the western end of the English railway network. And it's from here I'm going to set off this morning and see just how far east I can get, but only travelling on trains coded with a two-head code. And two rules, the second rule being also that I'm not allowed to change stations at any point using any other form of transport except by train. So no walking across the road from one station to the other, no taking underground trains, of course. Yeah, well, I'm going to try to get as far east as I can today. And uh, we're going to start off with the 0540 out of Penzance. And yeah, come along and we'll definitely have to see how this one goes. <laughs> Penzance is a great station and this is a lovely morning to start another challenge, travelling just on trains with a two head code. There's quite a lot of trains in the station at the moment as GWR stables them overnight at the platforms, ready for their early morning services. And my train is the one on the left here, it's 2U10, the 0540 for Cardiff Central. You know, I think I'm going to get my pick of the seats this morning. settled in on the first train. This will be my home for, oh, I'm not going to tell you how many hours. It's up to you. You should be working out what route am I going to take today to get as far east as possible. Well, Johnny is being a bit mean on you this morning, so we'll get back to the route just a bit later. But first, let's explain what all by twos means. UK trains are given a four-character head code, the first character denoting the class of the service. And loosely put, those codes are 1 for express passenger, 2 for ordinary passenger, 3, 4, 6, 7 and 8 is various classes of freight, 5 is for empty coaching stock, and 9 denotes Eurostar trains and a selection of others including the Elizabeth line. The second character is a code for the destination and the final two digits are just sequential numbers. And this journey up through Cornwall is really a time for me to save my energy as this is by far the longest leg and it will get us a huge hit of longitude points right from the get-go. After this, things will not be so easy. And crossing into Devon over the Tamar certainly never gets old, especially on a morning such as this. and we roll into Plymouth spot on time. You know, this is most definitely a stopping train. Plymouth is already the 18th stop on this service. The run down the Teen to Tidmouth is yet another lovely section, especially looking across the bridge to Shaldon. And then it's the blast along the Dawlish Sea Wall and we are soon looking out across the X estuary and eventually looking across to my home in Topsham. Now, it's a shame we couldn't have taken the first three hours as red and let me just get on at Exeter. Now we're past Exeter, I can confess there are no eastbound twos leaving here. So we're going to be heading on all the way to Bristol Temple Meads. And as this is a stopping train, we definitely have to do the little loop around Western Supermare. Mind you, I'm so pleased to be coming into Bristol Temple Meads. This will be the 33rd intermediate stop for this train, and I really do need a change of scenery from this Class 802 and also a change from its uncomfortable seats.
Right, we're here and we've got a bit of time to pop outside to do some shopping. Right, so train arrived even a couple of minutes early, so I've definitely got a 25 minute turnaround here at Bristol and uh, yeah, that means I've got time to go to the bakery. Hart's Bakery sits in the shadow of the old Bristol and Exeter Railway's headquarters. And with croissant in hand, I make my way into Henry Lloyd's beautiful 1870s entrance of the newer Temple Mead station. Right, here we are at Bristol Platform 9, and there it is behind me, two-car unit for Salisbury, because, of course, I couldn't go east at Exeter, and I can't actually really go east here, so I've got to go kind of back down again now to Salisbury. So, uh, come on, let's do it, train number two. Yeah, I got my uh, nice croissant for uh, for a bit later. I've just got something a little bit more substantial because uh, it's a long, long time. That's a long time on the train, about five hours. So uh, yeah, we now need to uh, press on and change a few more chains, uh, change a few more times. So first up, Bristol to Salisbury, and then we'll see. Well, there was actually a nervous few minutes as the driver was joined by a fitter and it seemed like our 165 maybe was not working. But there was a bit of banging around in the cab and we leave just four minutes late. The 165 has gained a minute by Bath, which incidentally is a lovely station that you will get a chance to see a lot more of on the channel as I did return here later in the week to take a run down to Weymouth. So look out for that one soon. And it's a very beautiful run down by the Avon. Crikey, everything is going to plan. I do love the retro Avoncliff Holt sign at Avoncliff. And Bradford on Avon has a similar brown and cream sign. And so it's not long before our little train trundles into Westbury, where, of course, it's crossing the Great Western Main Line that runs from London to Penzance. But it's taken us about six hours to get here by this convoluted route. Warminster is a really cute station. The wooden buildings date from its opening in 1851, although the canopies, they date from around 1930. And we're well into Wiltshire now, skirting the edge of Salisbury Plain. And just before Salisbury, we joined the London and North Western main line coming up from Exeter. And we've also shrugged off the late start and will arrive into Salisbury pleasingly two minutes ahead of schedule. Our little class 165 will only get a short break here as it's heading back to Bristol at 12 minutes past 12. And of course, any sensible person looking to go east would now hop on a train to London Waterloo. So here we are at Salisbury and everything is going to plan so far. And even the weather's looking okay as well. So definitely time for a coffee and maybe I'll dig out that croissant that I bought at Bristol. Salisbury is of course yet another railway station with a direct service to London, which I can't catch. So I'm gonna be here for about another 45 minutes until a type two leaves for Southampton Airport Parkway, I think it is. And that will get me down to Southampton Central and we keep on moving inexorably eastwards. So as they say, go east. And there goes our 165 back to Bristol and it's goodbye to Great Western. And here's my next ride and it's hello to South Western Railway. The old SWR livery is complemented by the old interiors on the 158. 
Now these older seats are definitely more comfortable as long as you can avoid the tighter legroom ones. And I have definitely lucked out with the extended legroom seat. This particular service does a big loop through the Southampton area before ending up at Romsey again, but actually it will then become the 2S39 and run back to Salisbury. So I'm guessing the break in the loop stops this becoming the 1256 to Salisbury when it's also the 1256 from Salisbury. Once through Salisbury Tunnel, the line for London carries on tantalisingly east, but we will swing southeasterly for Romsey and Southampton. And we're now well into the backyard of the London and South Western Railway, this route being opened by them way back in 1847. Before beaching, Romsey had lines to Salisbury, Andover, Eastleigh and Southampton. Now the lines to Andover and Eastleigh were lost, although the Eastleigh line was reinstated to passenger services in 2003, and it's our little train that will come back along that line in about 45 minutes time. Soon we're heading into Southampton Central past its venerable old signal box and we are still spot on schedule. And we wave goodbye to our 158 as it continues on its loop past the airport and Eastleigh and back to Romsey and eventually Salisbury. And that was a pleasant ride on the old 158. Still had its uh, old, more comfortable seats. And uh, I got in the seat that had extended legroom as well. So that was a nice chill out for half an hour. So the day rolls on and now we're at Southampton Central. So need to keep going east. What's the next train then? Well, I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes. Right, it's, uh, oh, shut up love. Thank you. Cheers then, Earl Grey tea. Now I can't get to London from here because it's the whole one and two problem. So I'm on the 1428 on to Portsmouth and South Sea, where I will be able to get a number two into London. So let's hope that one isn't delayed. But anyway, let's uh, let's press on and uh, 1428 to Portsmouth and South Sea. And finally, we arrive at the first electric train of the day, and it's a class 450 to zero unit that will take us to Portsmouth. I suppose we could say that they're not bad trains, and the 3 plus 2 seating will be popular on busy services, making sure that more people will get to sit down. And today, it does mean I can have a bank of six seats all to myself. The first part of the route takes us north alongside the River Itchen to St Denis, which, it turns out, is quite a charming old station. Once through the station we can cross the river and head on down through some of the small places along Southampton Water, such as Hamble. Then it's across another river before we roll into the junction station of Fareham. Port Creek Junction marks the point where the train crosses the creek itself and passes on to Port Sea Island. And soon after that, we're into Fratton. And after a brief stop, the train completes its journey into Portsmouth and South Sea Station, where remarkably, we are still running to time. into Portsmouth and South Sea and Portsmouth and South Sea is where we need to be because we can catch a two head coat train to London from here and that'll be leaving in about half an hour. Yeah I'm on the 1607 to London Waterloo via Guildford 
which pleasingly is an hourly service and it's a tour so yeah looks like we can get up towards the smoke which is of course what we have to do if we're going east yeah so that's my uh, my train to our right just came in from Southampton uh, a little bit about ticketing how did I get this far? I actually purchased a Freedom of the South West Rover ticket and that meant that I could get travel all the way between Penzance and here in Portsmouth. Now, as it's a Rover ticket, it wasn't actually valid until after nine o'clock, but I, could cer I certainly have already used it to go down to Penzance yesterday and then I bought a single ticket for that 5 5.40 train this morning and I used that as far as Tiverton Parkway when the train arrived at five past nine so therefore I switched then on over, over onto this Rover ticket so all the travel that I've done so far since Tiverton through Bristol, Salisbury, Southampton and here has all been on that Rover ticket so now I'm going on advanced singles and actually the price difference between the advanced singles and the pay on the day single was so great that in fact not only have I got an advanced single on the 1607 that's up there and that's the one we're going on but as my backup I've also got an advanced single on the 1707 in case that I'd missed a connection or something had been delayed or cancelled because honestly it was it was so little that actually it was worth paying twice and making sure that I definitely had an advanced price on it. Well the first major worry of today's escapade is uh, that's the 1607 and I was talking to the driver and she said she wasn't actually sure whether they had a guard to crew it with her. It's, uh, it's 10 minutes before it's due to go and there's no sign of driver or most importantly the guard. Well excellent the guard has turned up and unlocked all the doors and the three of us because that's all there is have got on the train and I just saw the driver further back she's walking up towards the cab so we might get away at 1607 hooray and indeed we do it only takes a minute to get to Fratton and then we cross Port Creek and leave Port Sea Island so now I can settle into my seat for the roughly two hour ride from here to Clapham Junction and Clapham Junction is where I had a very big decision to make Petersfield is a lovely old station dating from the opening of the line in 1859. Although I did miss recording the Grade 2 listed signal box which was on the other side of the train. And on the border of Hampshire we arrive at Liphook, which now has a new passenger lift which is great to see. At Hazelmere the train is due to stand for 15 minutes whilst it waits to be overtaken by the fast train to London. Our on-train team helpfully inform us that the fastest route to London is to switch to that service which will pull up next to us in just five minutes. I'm not sure there was any value in pointing out to them the rules of the all by twos challenge. So I just sat quietly and waited it out. And so we carry on stopping at stations on the way before we're joined by the North Downs line at Shalford Junction. And beyond Guildford we join the South West Main Line at Woking and we can now pretend to be a fast train as we go non-stop to Clapham Junction. And as we rattle through London's outer southwestern suburbs, here's the choice I've got to make. Now I could pick up a London overground train at Clapham Junction, which would take me towards Stratford, and then I could get into East Anglia. Or I could change for services that could get me into Kent. Incidentally, that Kent route is complicated because if I go to Waterloo, all the trains for Kent will leave from Waterloo East. And whilst that's almost the same station, it's actually a different station with a different station code. And therefore, 
That short walk would break the rules of always leaving from the station you arrive at. Clapham Junction and now I've got to tap back in because I'm going to get the train to London Bridge. Let's go. So the answer to the big question is I'm going to be heading for Kent. But due to that annoyance at Waterloo, the only way is to take a tour here that will loop around the south of London and bring us back into London Bridge. Now this service starts out very busy, but once it swings back northbound at Crystal Palace, everybody is gone. And we've even got time for some Jeff Marshall bin bag action at Forest Hill. I've also now bagged a more comfortable seat in the declassified first class and the light is getting more golden. What a lovely evening we can expect on the trains. At least, I hope. Well, there's a wait for our platform at London Bridge, but it's only because we've got here just a bit early. And you know, this ride hasn't taken us all that further east, but it is a very important little shift, as now we can pick up southeastern services for Kent. Into London Bridge, still on schedule. So it's about quarter past seven now, and I'm on the 1943 to Ramsgate, so... I already have a ticket for that, nice another advanced ticket. All I've got to do now is tap out for that little London ride I just had from Clapham Junction to here at London Bridge and then bang myself back in with my barcode and it's platform six which is over there. Right, platform six at London Bridge, there's a couple of trains in before mine and then we'll hop on and it's off to Ramsgate. But will it end there? We'll have to stay and see. Shortly after leaving London Bridge at about Hither Green, I reckon, is when we cross the Greenwich Meridian. And I'm putting a brave face on it now, but I'm very tired indeed. But as we roll into the Kent countryside, this really is one beautiful train ride. And of course, I am now feeling pretty confident that I'm going to hit my ultimate target tonight. You know, the platforms at Tunbridge are reminiscent of so many of Southern Railway's 1930s rebuilds. It's so lovely. And it's at Tunbridge that the Hastings line continues southbound, but we continue southeast. The sun is sinking fast now and Ashford marks the point where nearly all of my fellow passengers have now departed the train. Ashford is also where we pass under HS1 and swing in a northeasterly direction for Canterbury and ultimately the Kent coast. The fields are becoming darker and the moon looks over us to ensure we reach our destination. But not before we have a quick visit to one of the UK's newest stations at Thanet Parkway. And then just a little later we're into a very quiet Ramsgate station. And we've made it to Ramsgate and it suddenly got dark and it's very cold. I'm quite shivery, probably because I'm also incredibly tired now. Anyway, this train here is the 2205 to London Victoria. Not that I want to go back to London Victoria again, but it's a tour. And we can just add that little bit 
of extra. So we've got to Ramsgate, but we can get just that tiny bit further east. This train will go to Broadstairs, and that is my target. Man, it was really cold out there. The temperature has really dropped. And yet again, I got a bit of southeastern declassified first class. Comfortable enough for a six minute journey. And our eerily empty train slides through the dark and through Dumpton Park before I reach my journey's end at Broadstairs. And here we are, 17 hours and 35 minutes after I left Penzance this morning and more like 18 and a half hours since I left Jen and Paul's house with the sun just rising. And I think I'm going to catch up with you tomorrow. So here we are at Broadstairs the morning after the night before and it has been a very interesting day and I've had a lovely morning walking around the town, had an absolutely fantastic coffee down on the seafront, absolutely beautiful coffee. Now I'm waiting for my 11.55 and that will take me on a javelin back to St Pancras and then a quick change at, across to Paddington and I'll be home in Devon in no time at all. Funnily enough, it won't take about 18 hours. It's funny how much quicker it is if you get a one-type train, isn't it? Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, madness on an all by twos. Do comment on uh, anything you like about it and uh, do join me again. And uh, it might be a little while before I give myself another challenge like this because I am very, very tired this morning. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and all the, all the interaction you give. And it's really great to see people as I'm traveling about and um, most of your comments, well, nearly all your comments really are, are positive and friendly and do pick me up on mistakes. They're always welcome as well. But in the meantime, from Broadstairs, thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't seen it already, why not check out last year's All By Twos when I went north? <laughs>